In the depths of the past, several tales of unimaginable horror emerged, where punishment took on gruesome and eerie forms. Among these chilling accounts, one method of execution stands out, striking fear into the hearts of all who heard its dreadful name, sawing in half. This nightmarish practice, whispered in hushed tones, captivates the imagination with its sheer terror and brutality, conjuring unspeakable shivers as tales unfold of individuals condemned to face this gruesome fate. Thus, let's embark on a daring expedition back in time, deep into the heart of the darkened corners of history, to the haunting world of Sawing in Half. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The Grizzly Execution of Procopius During the chaotic era of 365 AD in the ancient Roman Empire, a bold and ambitious man named Procopius rose, challenging the reigning ruler Valens' authority by proclaiming himself emperor. Driven by his thirst for power, Procopius gathered his forces to overthrow Valens and establish his own rule. The clash between the two rival claimants ultimately led to a decisive battle. However, fate seemed to favor Valens that day as Procopius and his forces suffered a crushing defeat. Overwhelmed by Valens' superior strength and military strategy, Procopius was on the brink of collapse. Yet, Procopius' downfall was not solely due to Valen's martial skills, but to the treacherous turn of events by his generals, Algelonius and Gamorius, who had struck a deal with Valens, motivated by the allure of personal gain. As the defeated Procopius was captured, his dreams of triumph were shattered. Valens, driven by vengeance, sought to make an example of this aspiring usurper devising a punishment so brutal that its memory would reverberate throughout history. Taking inspiration from the ancient legend of the bandit Sinus and his grisly execution method, Valens devised a horrific execution of Procopius in the year 366 AD. Commanding Procopius to be bound to two sturdy trees with their branches forcefully bent downward, Valen instructed the trees to be released, which caused their pent-up energy to unleash a terrifying force. The result was as horrifying as it was savage. Procopius was torn apart. Meanwhile, Valens fulfilled his promise of favor to the treacherous generals, Algelonius and Gamorius. However, the favor bestowed upon them would forever stain their names with infamy. In a chilling act of retribution, Valens ordered both generals to be subjected to the gruesome punishment of being sawn in half with their bodies torn apart by a relentless blade. Apart from the Roman Empire, this haunting punishment was also reported to have been used in Africa and several parts of the world. A Treacherous Execution in Africa In the early 18th century, during the reign of Sultan Moulay Ismail in Morocco, a man named al qaid Malek found himself at the center of a troubling situation. He was believed to be a chief rebel involved in a rebellion led by one of the Sultan's sons, Moulay Mohammed. Additionally, he was accused of beheading Ali Bukhazra, a cousin of the Sultaness. The Sultaness, deeply angered by these actions, urged the Sultan to take action and punish al qaid for his acts of treason and murder. Feeling compelled to please his wife, Sultan Moulay sought the assistance of his chief carpenter in 1705. He inquired about his saw's capabilities to cut a man in two. And after assuring the Sultan of his capability, he was assigned the gruesome task. However, before setting off, the carpenter sought guidance on whether Al-Qaid should be sawn across or along his length. 
and the Sultan decreed that the song should proceed lengthwise from head downwards. But also, he instructed Bukhazra's sons, seeking revenge for their father's murder, to accompany the carpenter and determine the most fitting way to exact their revenge upon Alcade. Accompanied by eight assistants from the public executioner, the master carpenter made his way to the prison while Alcade was held. He concealed two new saws within cloth to keep Alcade unaware of the intended manner of his execution. Alcade was then mounted on a mule, secured with an iron chain, before being led to the public square where a large crowd of approximately 4,000 of his relatives and fellow tribe members had gathered. The scene was chilling as they wailed, screamed, and expressed their grief in a public display of sorrow. In stark contrast, Alcade appeared undisturbed, calmly smoking from his tobacco pipe. Once dismounted, his clothes were stripped away, and incriminating letters meant to prove his treason were thrown into a fire. Next, Alcade was tightly strapped onto a wooden board and placed upon a saw bench with his arms and legs securely fastened. The executioners initially attempted to begin sawing him from the head down as per the emperor's instructions. However, Bukhazra's sons intervened, demanding that they start between Alcade's legs instead, believing it would prolong his suffering. Amidst the horrifying screams of Alcade and his anguished relatives, the execution commenced. As the saw cut through his flesh up to his navel, it was withdrawn to allow the executioners to continue from the opposite side. Surprisingly, Alcade remained conscious, pleading for water. However, his friends, thinking it best to hasten his demise and alleviate his agony, urged the executioners to persist. Thus, they resumed sawing from Alcade's skull down to his navel until his body was torn apart. Throughout the process, chunks of flesh were torn by the teeth of the saw, causing blood to splatter and making the entire spectacle unbearable to witness. Nevertheless, it was also reported that around 300 other conspirators met their end through impalement in addition to Alcade's horrifying fate. However, another account suggests that apart from those 300, approximately 20 of the main conspirators had their limbs sawn off and were left to die in the marketplace. A Persian Woman of Valor In the ancient Iranian Empire, during the reign of King Darius II from 423 to 405 BC, a woman of significant influence emerged, possessing a power that surpassed her noble lineage. This woman was Parasadus, the wife and half-sister of the king. Parasadus had an exceptional talent for maneuvering through the complex world of court intrigues and effectively eliminating her enemies. Her intelligence and skill and navigating treacherous political waters struck fear in those who dared to challenge her. Even the most skilled courtiers paled in comparison to her masterful manipulations. However, a significant event in Parasitis' enigmatic reign unfolded when she directed her anger towards the siblings of her daughter-in-law, Cetera, who was married to Artaxerxes II. Motivated by vengeance, she sought to eliminate them, plunging the court into fear and uncertainty. Among her targets was Roxana, Statera's sister, who met a chilling and horrifying fate, being subjected to the gruesome act of being sawn in half. After Roxana's execution, Parasadis contemplated the execution of her daughter-in-law, Statera. However, fate intervened, sparing Statera from a similar gruesome fate. As Parasadis prepared to harm her daughter-in-law, Artaxerxes II made a heartfelt plea, appealing to her maternal instincts. Despite Parasadis' cruel nature, his heartfelt pleas compelled her to spare Statera's life reluctantly. But following the death of King Darius II, Parasadis' influence continued to grow. Swift and determined, she took advantage of the power vacuum left by her husband's passing, tightening her grip on Persian politics and ensnaring unsuspecting individuals into her treacherous web. 
And in a calculated move, Parasatis orchestrated the poisoning of the reigning queen, Statera. The 18th Century America Nonetheless, adding to the accounts of eerie and horrific punishments witnessed throughout history are tales of sawing in half in 18th century America. In a bone-chilling narrative penned by a French captain and intrepid traveler named Jean-Bernard Bossu, within his widely read work Nouveau Voyages en Indes Occidentales, published in 1768, a shocking tale of a man being sawn in half was described. According to Basu's account, in 1757, a Swiss mutineer met the gruesome fate of being sawn in half on a secluded island known as Cat Island in present-day Mississippi. The exact reasons for his execution remain unknown. As Basu recounts, the unfortunate mutineer was confined within a meticulously crafted wooden box resembling a coffin, purposely designed to restrict his movements. To the horror of the onlookers, a cross-cut saw was brought forth and the mutineer was allegedly nailed inside the box. What followed was a horrifying spectacle as the trunk was sawn in two, severing the ill-fated soul trapped within. Basu further claims that this method of execution, known as sawing in half, was a traditional punishment within Swiss military circles. He even suggests that one Swiss mutineer chose to take his own life rather than face this gruesome destiny. Therefore, it is posited that the alleged act of sawing in half was carried out in accordance with Swiss military law rather than French law. However, an extensive study conducted by Gerald Meyer von Canal examining recorded executions in the Swiss canton of Zurich from the 15th to the 18th century found no evidence of any executions involving sawing in half. The Martyrdom and Jews Now, beyond the realm of ancient rulers and medieval lands, early Christianity also reveals harrowing tales of this ghastly execution method. One such martyr who endured this excruciating faith was Simon the Zealot, an apostle of Jesus. Historical accounts recount his martyrdom in the faraway lands of Persia, where he faced the horrifying punishment of being hung upside down. At the same time, his body was mercilessly sliced apart by the teeth of a saw. Furthermore, ancient rabbinic tales tell a similar tale of the revered prophet Isaiah in the Bible, renowned for his prophetic messages. He too, fell victim to the wrath of King Manasseh of Judah and suffered a similar fate. In a chilling display of cruelty, it is said that Isaiah was subjected to being sawn apart following the king's orders. Some accounts suggest that he was confined within the hollowed trunk of a tree where he met his tragic end. Others describe using a wooden saw that tore his body asunder, perpetrating an act of unimaginable horror. So, what are your thoughts on this ghastly execution? Let us know in the comment section. If you like our video, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And remember to hit that subscribe button. Until we come your way again next time with an insane story. Bye for now.